So, Mark, did you see the crazy lines at Uber, Lyft, and even the taxis at the airport this week? There's several big conventions, I think builders' conventions, construction stuff, and the city was packed. But I have never seen that Uber area so full, and the taxi line, like, stretched all the way through baggage claim. Insane. Yeah, the busiest I've ever seen it for taxi line was March Madness, like, the, the Wednesday before March Madness kicks off. And we even did it like I was like, I'm not waiting in this line. It wasn't it was all outside wrapped around, but it didn't even come inside to the baggage claim. And I said, let's go find one of these limo drivers. So we got a limo for like 60 bucks or 80 bucks and and did that instead of waiting in that line. So that's kind of like a little hack. And the other hack we've always talked about is take the tram to the international terminals. There's usually less line, less of a line there for sure. Yeah. And there's buses that run two from there if you want to be super cheap but uh yeah that that line was insane usually right now the taxi lines are pretty short because everybody's using ride share so don't wait in those lines this is why we need the monorail out to the out to the airport there you go i know we're gonna get that comment We talk a lot about Chris Angel on this show. Some people think we hate him. It's just in good fun. It all started kind of innocently with a joke on one show, and it kind of grew from there. But since we give him so much shade, I figure we should give him some props. He just made a personal donation of a million dollars, raised another $315,000 for Make-A-Wish, Cure for the Kids, and some other charities for his 55th birthday. So good on you, Chris Angel. Anything to say about it? No, that's awesome. And, you know, anytime somebody gives money for something kids, it's a, a soft spot in my heart. So... You know, kudos to him for doing it, and we'll uh, abstain for a a few more weeks. (laughs) Out of respect, how about that? Yeah, and uh, then we'll cover those best jokes in the comments we talked about on the last show, because a couple good ones came in from the last show that had me cracking up. But good on Chris Angel. Keep doing what you're doing with charity. I did mention on the last show that I was going to talk about my MSC Cruise experience in the casino, so we'll talk about that really quickly here. Now, first, I was on the MSC Maravilla, which was built in 2017, so it's a fairly modern ship, and the casino there is really subpar, I would say. It's almost like it was an afterthought, like they put it in the most cramped corner of the ship that they could, really low ceilings, and they crammed as many machines in there as they possibly could, so like there was times when you're walking through the casino where you can't, like where you'd have to go on your tippy toes to kind of like get between chairs. So it wasn't the best experience, the the machines weren't the most modern. Wait, so as far wait, as like, wait, we gotta know, how was the carpet? It, it had kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting <laughs> carpet. Um, it has this like red and black, uh, you know, color scheme in the casino, kind of playing off playing cards. Nothing too uh, interesting there. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought the casino was fairly subpar compared to like the Mardi Gras, which had this amazing big casino. Even the older Carnival ships have big casinos. Some of the older Royal Caribbean ships have cramped casinos like this but this was probably the worst I've ever seen on a cruise ship. But what happened to us is, unlike all the other cruise lines now, they are still using ticket in, ticket out on MSC. All the other ones, you load cash from your cruise account, and then when you cash out, it goes back to your cruise account. So the the first night, my wife loaded money and didn't cash it out appropriately and left it in the machine, unfortunately, a couple hundred dollars. And so the next day, we go to the casino, try to like load it from the bank that we thought it was in, And, you know, this is a mistake people make. It's definitely our mistake, so nobody's trying to blame anybody for that. Uh, But we found out that this was the case, and so we go to the casino manager. Because you're not on a land-based casino. You know, there's people on the ship. There's only so many people. It's not like some random person could have come and done this and walked away. So they decide to go review the tapes, and they come back to us and say, oh, we don't have 100% coverage in the casino. We don't see who used the, the money on the slot machine. Apparently, somebody came up, lost all the money, and uh, they couldn't figure out who it was based on the cameras. And I thought at first they were lying to us, but then I went, kind of looked, and because the casino is so cramped and the ceilings are so low and the machines are so tall, that where they have cameras, there's definitely some blind spots, which was a little bit shocking to me in 2023 to have a casino with without like cameras every single place. Um, so basically they said, oh, you're out of luck. And, you know, the good part of the story was that we pushed back a little bit and they eventually gave my wife back all of the money that was in that machine as free play. And like I said, the person came in and they lost all the money. Had they cashed out the money and tried to get it in cash, then the casino would have been able to know who it was. But because they just sat there in a blind spot and lost it, they didn't know. And uh, then we proceeded to play video poker, trying to, you know, keep the odds as good as possible because slot machines, you could probably lose 90% of that free play. And 
my wife was doing really well, kind of getting through the free play, keeping about 100% of the money back, which was really nice. And then she hit a royal flush. So <laughs> she left up $1,000. Joke's on you. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it all turned out really, it went from like being really, really bad to, to really, really good. But kudos to them. I will say the casino manager was, you know, friendly. She contacted the corporate office. They did agree to make it right. Or, well, as right as what they felt, and it was a good, I think, resolution, and it was something that we were happy with and they felt okay with because they were requiring us to gamble the money through there. And, uh, yeah, just moral of the story, make sure you hit the cash out button and know what the system is. Definitely our fault, a good ending. And, uh, like I said, kudos to the staff of the casino there. I just didn't particularly like the casino itself. Yeah, crazy that the person finds this money in a machine and then lose proceeds to lose it all. That's uh, that's pretty rough. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to hear one that the casino was an afterthought. I, I would imagine this is one of the revenue drivers of the cruise line. A lot of people go on cruises just to gamble, and we know that you went on uh, an, an international cruise that was aimed just at gamblers. So that's kind of bizarre to me. But it really, really strange that they don't have camera coverage throughout the entire casino. It's so easy to you know. Put, put cameras everywhere so i don't know what what the deal is with that maybe we'll see a string of uh, robberies happening on cruise ships now that they know that there's not camera <laughs> coverage instead of in vegas at the casinos yeah that was my point to the casino manager i said it doesn't feel safe if you don't have coverage on the machine somebody could you know pick a pocket steal something and you know you don't have coverage of that or wouldn't be able to figure it all out and you know they sort of agreed i don't know what the what that is but when i really looked at the cameras there's definitely spots where machines are blocking the cameras. Perhaps when they ins installed everything five, six years ago, they had shorter machines or something where you could see over them. But uh, now the, the machines basically go all the way to the ceiling. So it was a crazy experience. Uh, but like I said, a good ending and my wife hit the Royal Flush. So we were, we were happy and uh, we were happy anyway, because they, no matter what happened in the outcome of fr that free play, I think they went over and above. I don't think anybody would expect a casino to give you back your money even in the form of free play. So good on them for that. Just build better casinos in your ships, MSC. So uh, Vital Vegas this week had an interesting article about 10 things going away in Vegas. And many of these things are stuff we've talked about on the show a lot. So I thought it was a fun kind of article to discuss, you know, coin slot machines, dollar roulette chips, which are interesting. They're making you do smaller or larger minimum bets on all the numbers, which is a little bit crazy. Buffets, real slot machines, and this one, fixed prices. This is something, have you run into this in Vegas where you go into like a, you know, a shop to buy a soda or something like that and all of a sudden it's like eight bucks because they don't put prices on anything and they charge different prices depending on how busy it is. That was a mistake I made one time in Las Vegas. Now I just go to CVS or Walgreens. Yeah, that's the one good thing about all these uh, strip malls with CVSs on them is you can go always go there and the prices are the same. But that is, it's just the shadiest thing ever to adjust, you know, a gift shop price depending on the time of day and how busy it is. I hate that. And roulette is kind of, you know, I was surprised to see that one on there. I don't play a ton of roulette, but, you know, we've even seen back in the day 50 cent chips on the table, much less a dollar. I mean, that's always been the fun. You get the color you get a dollar, you know, you get a hundred chips, you got a couple stacks that so you can play around. And if they're making it $5 minimum per bet, that's just, that's like a whole nother level and kind of crazy. So hopefully that doesn't go away completely, but it just shows you like, you know, we've seen strip casinos, $50 minimum tables at 3 PM and stuff. So th that's the way it's going, which is sad to see. Yeah. Some of the other stuff on his list, dealers, of course, we have the rise of electronic gaming, free parking went away, mostly several years ago free premium restaurant seating you know now you've got to pay in a lot of the caesar's restaurants just to get a table by the window or something and uh, manners to people not tipping as well people being rude of course we've heard about all the fights and even the shooting stabbings yeah so there's there is a lot of change and i think he nailed it with this article definitely worth reading all his takes and we'll put a link in the description yeah i don't know that manners were ever a thing in vegas <laughs> Fair enough. Well, maybe back in the like Rat Pack days, right? Yeah. Because you had a behavior, yeah. or the mob would, uh, you know, they take you out back and make sure you make sure you had some manners. Here comes the comments. Vegas was better with the mob. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, we talked about free parking going away in that article, but I did want to give kudos to Resorts World. Uh, about a month, what a month and a half ago, they started charging for parking unless you have a player's card, 
And, you know, like, I don't always carry every player's card I have with me all the time. In fact, there's a lot of times I get to, like, a Caesars or MGM property, realize I don't have my card, then I got to take a ticket and get another card, and then on the way out, it doesn't recognize that I used a card to get in, so then it's like a pain, you got to call the person, all that. Well, Resorts World has fixed that. You can use their app, just log in to your account, and it gives you a QR code to scan at the parking garage. So I feel like that's a good solution. Hopefully, more uh, companies will do that. Not a huge thing, but at least if they're going to charge and give it free for players, they make it a little bit easier that you don't have to have your card with you at all times. Yeah, I run into that even here in Detroit. Like Greektown Casino is normally just free. You just drive in. But if there's a game going on or a concert or something, they'll make you show your player's card. And I often don't have that on me. So, you know, a lot of people park at the casinos for free parking. The one nice thing is MGM's a little bit outside of the city center. So that's always, there's never a, a gate or anything to go through, but... Yeah, Greek town. I've always gotten annoyed that, you know, and I think you were with me once and I didn't have it. And we had to park across the street for, you know, way cheaper, which is, it's just stupid. Like you can't even go in and bring your card out at the end and get reimbursed. So they, yeah, I, I wish there was a QR code. It'd be awesome. Yeah, I hope uh, more companies do this. A simple solution, really good. Gets people into your app too. So it keeps them, you know, logging in and, and all of that stuff. All right. Especially so uh, with all especially with all this switch to online gaming and people wanting you to use their app and stuff. It just, it, it needs to happen. Absolutely. All right, Mark, did you hear that this uh, company called Lon Love, they looked at the 200 biggest cities in the U S and determined which ones are best for a family vacation, a kid friendly vacation. This and guess where <laughs> this is worse than the senior frogs list. I swear. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got you got to get clicks, right? So Las Vegas comes in at number four out of 200. So the fourth most friendly, kid-friendly destination in the U.S. And a lot of that is because of the having fun rank. They rank at number two behind, I think, only Orlando because it has so many what they call zoos, theme parks, attractions. I mean, we don't really have very many of those things. But I guess if you count like the Flamingos at Flamingo and all these little venues that we have, then we have a lot of those kid-friendly attractions. I grew up coming to Vegas. I guess it was friendly for me, but I don't know that it sticks out to most people as the most uh, kid-friendly place. Yeah, it was weird. Like, they were ranked high and, and fun, and then uh, restaurants, which makes sense. But then there were, like, affordability in the hundreds and and all that stuff, and getting around was, was highly ranked. So I don't know how that ends up as number, you know, a top four uh, place. But New York City as number one is not... <laughs> I don't know who thinks New York City is a great kid-friendly destination. Like it's a great city, I love it, but I don't. It doesn't, you know, whistles and bells that it's uh, kid-friendly. So Miami, number three, another weird, weird choice. Like Orlando is like de facto number one always, right? Doesn't it have to be? Yeah, and Orlando comes in at number two, and then the other one on the top five would be Chicago at number five. I mean, this is how they describe Vegas as the entertainment capital of the world. There are plenty of things to do in Las Vegas for kids, big and small. In fact, Vegas ties with Orlando for having the second highest number of amusement and theme parks. And then there's also an abundant kid-friendly attraction, zoos and water parks, as well as kid-friendly dining options. I guess that's all true. It's just, if you look at a, I guess are if they... you take like a strict criteria, you don't look at all the rest, right? Because there's a lot of kid-unfriendly things here too. Yeah, are they t are they including like any resort that has a pool as a... <laughs> As a water park, I don't, I don't know where, where they're coming up with some of this. I would say like '90s Vegas was more kid friendly with the arcades and and all that type of stuff. And there definitely is a lot of kids stuff. And maybe they're doing you know Vegas proper, not the Strip Vegas, but you know when you get into locals casinos like the Mermaids and stuff like that. There's definitely a lot of kid friendly stuff for locals, but I don't know that I think of it as a travel destination that I'm you know my kids would be excited to go to necessarily. If you stay off strip at one of the resort type places that have cool pool and stuff, yeah, they're going to have a great time. But I don't know. It's just a weird, weird spot to land, I think. Nothing like taking your kids to Fremont Street at midnight. Perfect family oh, triggered. friendly uh, <laughs> thing to do. Let us know in the comments what you think about this list and Las Vegas is a kid friendly attraction. Uh, there are some sports updates. First off, the rumor mill that Aaron Rodgers from the Green Bay Packers may be looking to sign with the Raiders. They may be traded from the Packers. And that's an interesting development. Devontae Adams, when asked what neighborhood Rodgers would come live in, he answered mine. So we know Devontae Adams played with Rodgers in Green Bay. That would be interesting for the Raiders. But the big sports news this week was that the A's were in town meeting with uh, casino owners and the casinos on the north end of the Strip. 
And they've done this before, but all of the rumored stadium sites, you know, are kind of challenged, but we got a new one and that's going to be the old Frontier site. That's where Wynn had announced Wynn West a few years ago and then canceled it. I believe the land is still owned by Wynn. That stupid uh, space hotel that they made a public release like a year or two ago was supposed to be on that land, but we all knew that was kind of a dream. I think this is actually probably the best spot for a Major League Baseball stadium, although there won't be parking and it would be really tight on that spot. So there are some challenges there. But, I mean, uh, yeah, the A's are still pursuing Las Vegas. Oakland doesn't seem to be able to get their stuff together. So there's still a chance that they get here. Yeah, I think the site makes a lot of sense in Resorts World ahead of the curve. They're going to build parking lots on all their vacant land and, and charge out the wazoo for people going to games. But I think this is the, the one site that makes the most sense. It's still pretty close to the action, but far enough away that it's not going to clutter, clutter up everything. And, and I think it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, and why would Wynn want to do this? I mean, why wouldn't they want a stadium right across the street from their properties? So it would make sense for them if the deal could be made. It would certainly make sense for Resorts World, Fountain Blue opening up, and everything on that area of the Strip, even Venetian Palazzo, and you have the MSG Sphere not far from there. So I think it, it makes sense if they can make it all work. But again, it's the financing. It's will you, will you get public money? But perhaps that's why they're meeting. Maybe they're trying to get some of these gaming companies in on it to help finance it, like similar to T-Mobile, where, you know, MGM partly financed it and, and owns it. We'll keep you guys up to date on uh, what happens with that. Please put a roof on it if you build it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think a roof is uh, required in, yeah. in uh, Vegas for baseball just because of the, the weather in the summer. All right, so let's uh, talk about our main story, and that is the visitor statistics for 2022. We now know the entire year's worth of statistics and we're not going to go through all of it. I'll put a link in the description so you can kind of dive in. They have great graphs. LVCVA does a great job compiling all of this stuff. But uh, they do, a, in their numbers, they compare to pre-COVID and then the 2021. For instance, for visitors for the entire year of 2022, it's down 8.7% from 2019 from pre-COVID, but up 20.5% from 2021. That's not a really a surprise. We, we see the recovery happening. But for me, the big number here is that average daily room rate up 28.9% from pre-COVID. So the average room costs more than 28.9% more than pre-COVID. And it's up 24.5% from 2021. Crazy numbers. I mean, crazy, crazy yeah. numbers. And, you know, what is the uh, conventions down like 25% compared to pre-COVID? So these are people coming, you know, leisure people and they're just sticking it to them at almost 30% higher price, which is just insane to me. But, you know, I think this is a lot of people coming in from California, which we saw started with COVID and kind of grew and we've seen it on the traffic and everything. And I think that they can afford the higher rates and that's kind of where it's been going and and Rainmaker made their money. I mean, they definitely earned that commission. You know, allegedly. Pushing all these, <laughs> allegedly pushing all these high prices. But yeah, you would think with conventions and stuff, people using business accounts, they're not as price worried, you know, of what they're charging. But the fact that that's way down and it's all people spending their own money and the prices are this high is just, it's crazy to me. Now on the convention side, you're right, it's down, but it's not an apocalypse like some people had predicted. You know, 24.9% down from pre-COVID, but still up 126.2% from 2021. So the recovery has happened with conventions. We talked at the top of the show, the craziness at the airport, although CES this year was very small compared to pre-COVID. So it'll be interesting to see how this year goes if they get closer to those pre-COVID numbers for conventions, because we have all that convention space around town. And if that happens, if conventions continue to recover with all of the other people visiting, I expect prices would continue to just rise exponentially. The other thing we should talk about is gaming revenue in Clark County, up 23.5% from pre-COVID in 2022 and up 11.8% in 2021. I think we're at like 22 months or something of record revenue or of revenue growth in gaming. So people are still gambling like crazy, losing like crazy. And so while there's a little bit less people, they're all gambling more and the casinos are making more money. Yeah, it's been an interesting shift because before COVID, we saw Vegas kind of move away from the gamblers thinking it was entertainment and dining was where the money was at. And now I still don't think they've made the full shift back to gamblers. Like they're not giving, you know, great offers to, to draw gamblers in, but they're raking in the dough off of it. So uh, it's a weird, it's a weird place to be in Vegas. Like, you know, the service isn't quite as good on the restaurant and entertainment side of things, but that's 
where their focus has been and gambling is just like tearing it up and they're, you know, the comps aren't as good and, and all that. So I don't know. It's just, I think it's just people coming as like one off or two offs that aren't big gamblers, but are dropping, you know, their money there versus the more religious gambler that comes several times a year. I wonder too, if like the rise of video slot machines has a lot to do with this. Obviously this has been happening for a long time, but they have much, much lower payouts and they're much more popular. If you went into a casino 10, 15, 20 years ago, there was a significant number of video poker machines which have much higher returns on play. And you know, you just see these video slots packed because they're like little video games and often they pay out really terrible. So I wonder if that has something to do with it and less people playing table games, although we see electronic table games which should have you know similar odds to the regular table games. But yeah, I'm interested to hear what people out there have to say. Is it the changing demographic of the casino? Is it just people willing to blow money? But either way, I mean, it's hard to blame the casinos for raising prices when they have this sort of demand and people are, you know, spending money like this. And that's why you see everybody getting nickel and dimed every single place. And it's frustrating to people who have this love of Vegas like we do and so many of our viewers because we remember a time when that didn't happen and it does take away some of the joy. But... I think maybe all these new people that are coming, they're getting joy in some way. I guess it just, we'll have to see if they return. Yeah, they're getting joy spending their money. <laughs> <laughs> Taking their kids to Fremont Street at midnight. That's uh, yeah. what it's all about. After they lost a thousand bucks at the slot machine, then they go to Fremont. Vegas be Vegas. Well, yeah, let us know what you think about any of these topics down in the comments, the visitor stats, the crazy airport crowds, Chris Angel raising money for charity and uh, my casino cruise experience. Don't flame me too hard. We all make mistakes. Give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you receive notifications of all of our videos. We do two a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. We'll be back in just a few days with another video. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Have a great weekend, everybody.